In this video, you'll learn about byte ordering, which is often referred to as endianness. But first, a story. Once upon a time, there was a doctor called Gulliver, who set sail for the South Seas on a ship called the Antelope. The ship was caught in a terrible storm and Gulliver had to swim for shore. He awoke on an island called Lilliput. The people were just like him, but they were tiny. Gulliver was a giant. Gulliver discovered that the Emperor's great-grandfather had passed a law stating that all Lilliputians should eat their boiled eggs by breaking the little end first, because his son cut himself on the big end. This law sparked a war between those who agreed, the Little Endians, and those who didn't, the Big Endians. And that's enough of that. If you want to know how things turned out for Gulliver, you can read Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. It was first published in 1726. On the 1st of April 1980, a computer scientist called Danny Cohen wrote a paper entitled On Holy Wars and a Plea for Peace. Danny Cohen was instrumental in the development of ARPANET, which later became the Internet. He wanted to stop an argument about the best way to transmit data on a computer network. And it was in his paper that he borrowed the terms Little Endian and Big Endian. So what do they mean? At the risk of teaching your grandmother to suck eggs, let's start with the basics. From an early age, you were taught to count in base 10. We recognise this number as 1,234. This is a positional number system which assigns a place value to each of these digits. The leftmost digit has the largest place value and the rightmost digit the smallest. When the system was invented, which happened in India in the 5th century, the decision to put the most significant digit on the left was probably an arbitrary one. The same number could have just as easily been written like this. But we've been using the Hindu-Arabic number system for millennia. It's universally understood and it's unlikely to ever change. We write the biggest part of a number, that is, the big end, first. In base 10, numbers are written in big endian format. We use a similar approach when writing down the bits in a byte. The least significant bits are written on the right, and the most significant bits are written on the left. The bits within a single byte are written in big endian format. Adding together the place values wherever there's a 1 gives us the denary value, in this case 93. Most computer programs store numbers using multiple bytes. For example, an integer is usually stored using 32 bits, that's 4 bytes. The most significant bit of the most significant byte is usually designated as the sign bit, making it possible to store positive or negative integers using two's complement. Suffice to say for now, a zero in this position indicates a positive integer. We can apply the same method to convert this 32-bit number into denary. The result this time is something of a mouthful. 1,516,993,677. Large numbers like these are often expressed in hexadecimal because it's more human readable. In this case, we have 5a, 6b, 7c, 8d. The relationship between binary and hexadecimal also provides a convenient method of converting between the two. Each nibble of each byte corresponds to a single hexadecimal digit. This means an individual byte can be written as a two-digit hexadecimal number. So how does a computer go about storing a group of bytes in memory? Here's an abstract model of the computer's main memory. It's a convenient way for software engineers to visualise memory, even though the physical reality is somewhat different. The memory is represented as a linear structure in which each location has a sequential memory address. Each location is capable of storing one byte. We say the memory is byte addressable. In this model, the addresses are shown in base 10. Only addresses between 100 and 109 are shown for no particular reason. By convention, the lower memory addresses are written at the top and they get incrementally bigger as you read downwards. Although the individual bits of a single byte 
are written with the most significant bit first, there are two possible ways the bytes of a 32-bit number can be stored. Either by putting the least significant byte, 8D in this case, in the memory location with the lower address, or by putting the least significant byte in the memory location with the higher address. Putting the least significant byte in the location with the lower address is called little endian. Putting the least significant byte in the location with the higher address is called big endian. Now don't forget, computers only work with binary numbers. Each byte is shown here in hex, just for readability. The byte order used in the memory of most modern PCs is little endian. This begs the question why? The answer is largely historical. Early mainframe and microcomputers made by IBM were big endian, as were early Apple Macs. But one of Intel's first processors was little endian, because it improved the efficiency of some operations, as you'll see in a moment. Intel-based PCs have been little endian ever since. Here's our little endian group of bytes, written sideways this time. Notice that the least significant byte is still in the lower memory address. And here it is in binary. Suppose we want to add another 32-bit number to this one. This number is also stored in little endian format, but somewhere else in the memory. An old 8-bit processor, capable of only adding two bytes together at a time, would fetch the least significant byte of the first of these numbers from memory and add it to the least significant byte of the other. This might generate a carry bit, which would then need to be added to the next pair of bytes, and so on. This is pretty much how you would add a pair of base 10 numbers together on paper. Because the numbers were stored in little endian format, the processor didn't have to wait for the carry bit to be generated before it started fetching the next byte. This small amount of pipelining was enough to speed up some calculations. These days, the registers inside a CPU are much larger, typically 64 bits, and the buses that carry data around can move 64 bits at a time. This means that even two 64-bit numbers can be added together without all of these intermediate fetch operations. Nevertheless, this particular advantage of little endianness still applies when adding very, very large numbers together in so-called big num arithmetic, which has applications in modern cryptography. Let's take a look at another historical scenario. Suppose a programmer declares a variable to store a numeric value and uses the data type integer. In most high-level programming languages, Visual Basic for example, an integer occupies four bytes of memory. Now, suppose the number five is assigned to the variable. It's unlikely an assignment would be hard-coded like this, but for argument's sake, let's suppose there's reason to do so. When written to memory in little endian format, the least significant byte contains the value five. The other, more significant bytes will all contain zero. The contents of the memory look something like this. This particular 4-byte integer is stored at address 102, as far as the CPU is concerned. Later in the program, the contents of the variable are converted to a smaller numeric data type, such as a short, which requires only 2 bytes. Executing the cast involves locating the start of the 4-byte value according to its address, extracting the first byte, then simply adding one to the address in order to get the next byte. If a 4-byte value was being downcast to, say, a 1-byte value, this would be even quicker. But if the original 4-byte value had been stored at address 102 in big endian format, then casting to a smaller type would involve locating the value according to its address, adding 4 to the address to identify the most significant byte, then counting backwards the appropriate number of bytes from that position. Clearly more involved. In the old 8-bit processors, there were advantages to storing bytes in big endian order too. For example, if you wanted a rough estimate of a number, you only needed to look at the most significant byte. 
This was quicker if the most significant bite was retrieved first. Another argument for Big Endian order was that it was easier to check if a number was positive or negative. This can be done by examining the sign bit. By convention, the sign bit is the most significant bit in the most significant byte. So, if this is the first byte the processor gets to see, checking the sign of a number is quicker. The truth is that Big Endian and Little Endian byte orders would work just as well as each other these days for most operations, because most modern PCs are 64-bit machines. They fetch 8 bytes at a time from memory and process them together in 64-bit registers. Low-level programmers, and particularly those who develop embedded systems, need to be mindful of the nature of endianness, especially when it comes to exchanging data between systems that use different byte orders. Big Endian byte order is used when computers exchange data on a network, either via a cable or wirelessly. Multi-byte data are transmitted with the most significant byte first. This is a feature of nearly all network transmission protocols, including the ubiquitous TCPIP. In fact, another name for Big Endian format is Network Byte Order. The fact that the byte order used in network data transmission is different from that used internally by a computer is generally not a problem. Converting between Big Endian and Little Endian can be handled easily by the networking software. There's no particular advantage to sending network data in Big Endian format. When it comes to data transmission, what matters most is consistency. To quote Danny Cohen, We agree that the difference between sending eggs with the little or the big end first is trivial, but we insist that everyone must do it in the same way, to avoid anarchy. Since the difference is trivial, we may choose either way, but a decision must be made. But that's not the end of this particular story. Endianness also varies by file type. Here are some well-known image file types. Image files typically store huge amounts of numeric data. Knowing whether the file data are Big Endian or Little Endian only really matters if you're developing software to process the contents of an image file. But if you know the file type, you can find out what the byte order is. However, some file types can be Little Endian or Big Endian. The software handling them therefore needs a way to know which byte order has been used. A similar issue exists when it comes to text files, including HTML web pages, which are fundamentally text. Text characters are usually encoded using one of the Unicode transformation formats. So byte order could be an important consideration even for non-programmers. This is something I'll expand on in a different video.